Well, I've got a simple message for you this morning. And uh, I told Cheryl, I said, I don't think I'm going to be very long this morning. And every time I say that, she goes, oh, brother. <laughs> it seems like whenever I think it's going to be short, it ends up, you know, God kind of takes over. It's kind of good to have a, an outline to keep you, you know, in the bound, boundaries sometimes. But you can just, it's easy to preach five or six sermons in one setting if you're not careful. But uh, today, I want to talk about, or the title of the message would be Renovation of the Heart. And uh, <clears throat> what really got me thinking about this is we have been talking about renovating our house in some areas. And uh, I think we're actually going to get started on some things. Uh, we've actually already started on our, our patio we, in the backyard. We want to make it a little more inviting. And we uh, installed sort of like a little fence area around one corner of it. We're, uh, that's about as far as we've gotten so far. But we're going to... Uh, yeah, got a new patio set. Got a new patio set, <laughs> unfortunately. But, <laughs> we went to an auction last night. And, Cheryl was acting like it was all free. You know? <laughs> she signing, you know, silent auction. She just signing up for everything. I said, Lord, please send somebody to outbid her on some of that. And uh, so we, she got some pretty neat stuff. It didn't come out too bad. But uh, I said, happy birthday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in our patio, we're going to, you know, paint it, you know, the fence thing. We're, we got some furniture and some new furniture. But we may not paint that. We're going to paint some of that and maybe put like an awning out there and just make it, you know, really nice because when the kids come over, especially, it's nice to go outside and just enjoy the weather. And we got a little fire pit, you know, and just light a fire and eat and just sit around and talk a little bit out there. It's, it's pretty nice. And uh, we're going to do some work to our sunroom while it really needs work. And, that's kind of where the cat lives, you can imagine. And, uh, and unfortunately, that's where everybody comes in at, is that area right there. So we want to get that kind of fixed up a little bit. And then, and, uh, you know, if you ever drove, drove by our house, you know, it would be embarrassing, the landscaping that we don't have, you know. Uh, and we got done a lot of work getting things. Now I just need to get it all laid out and get it all set up and get some rock in there, some different things of that nature. So we're going to be doing that as well. And, uh, you know, then we get into the good stuff. Uh, we're going to tear out a wall, you know, and, and uh, put some new flooring down. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to take a while. <laughs> so it's going to be an over-the-winter job. Fortunately, we live downstairs, so it can look rough, you know, for, for months. And it won't really bother us upstairs. And then eventually, we hope to bring our bathroom out of the 70s and uh, into the current uh, era that we now live. It's kind of funny, I visited with Pastor Brad Payne this last week and, and we were talking and he was talking about a guy that bought a house and he's been fixing up and remodeling it and, and he says, yeah, he said that bathroom, you know, had that old 70s tile off the wall halfway and then that funky looking wallpaper and, and I go, you're describing our bathroom. <laughs> Anyway, he's going to tear a wall out there. He's got a small bedroom next to it. They're going to make this huge bathroom with big closets and everything. Well, we can't do that. We don't have the space. But, but uh, yeah, that, that bathroom could definitely use a, a little uh, updating. And, uh, but, you know, I said all that to say this. It's not unusual to renovate uh, our, our homes. Uh, I know that some of you have recently done that. I know Stan... Uh, has done a lot of new counters, and he's redone his bathroom, and he's done a beautiful hardwood floor. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going with beautiful laminated hardwood <laughs> floor, but uh, he put down the real thing, you know, the, the beautiful floor. He did a great job, and I'm sure he's wanting to come over and help me, even though I didn't help him. He's, he, you know, he's not going to do unto others as they did unto him. He's going to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. And so I, I, I know he's going to be knocking the door down to, to help me with that. Um, and, you know, I know uh, Mike and Crystal aren't here this morning, but I've seen on Facebook where they've done a lot of renovating in their house. And Tom and Gloria, uh, they've done a lot of renovating. And Mike and Kate redid their bathroom. And, and others of you may have done 
some renovating. So it's kind of a, a thing, you know, at some point in time you look at your house and you go, you know what, we need to make some changes. We need to upgrade this. We need to replace this with something new. And, and we do that a lot. But my question this morning is, have we considered renovating our hearts? And that's what we want to look at. And if you would turn with me to Luke 6.45, we'll start there. And it reads in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, let me just tell a little bit more on myself this morning. In case you didn't know it, I'm a bit of a pack rat. Yeah. If, you, if you ever helped me move, you, you know that. I think I wore out about three families the last time we moved. And, uh, you know, I have three sheds that are almost full of stuff. Now, to my credit, one of them's not that full. It's got some, you know, lawn equipment in it. And the other is Cheryl's fault. It's almost full of Christmas stuff. And that's stuff we do use every year. We pull it out, that and some winter tolls or summer tolls or whatever we may keep out there. But I have one big, big, big shed just full of stuff. I mean, I'm talking stacked up. As high, actually, you know, as high as you can reach. I've just got stuff in there. And, uh, you know, it's stuff that I haven't even looked at for several years. It's, it's just, it's in there. Stuff I've hung on to years just because. Mm -hmm. Anybody do any of that? Yeah. Just because I don't want to get rid of it. I mean, I have stuff when I was a kid. I don't really need it. I have a lot of stuff I don't need, obviously. Because, you know, I haven't gotten out there and gotten it, what, six years that we've lived there now? And it's just out there. There's times that go, I know I got that tool, it's out in the shed, that's kind of the end of the store, I go buy a new one. <laughs> because I'm not going to go out there in that shed and look for it, because it'd be an all-day job pulling everything out and trying to find whatever I'm looking for. So, uh, uh, I guess we could call it clutter. Fortunately, I, I, I removed most of it out of the house, so it's not clutter in the house, except for maybe a little bit in the laundry room. But other than that, it's clutter in the laundry room and clutter in that big shed. And again, the problem is with clutter is uh, when I try to find something important, it's hard to find because of all the clutter that surrounds it. Anybody relate to that at all? Now, I don't know about Larry, my brother, but uh, I know Steve, our middle brother, He's, he doesn't have that. I mean, he's got the philosophy, if I haven't used it in a year, I'll get rid of it. I don't need it. And so, you know, you go in his garage and everything's just kind of nice and neat. And I know Ron must be that way too, because I've seen on his shelves, he's got tubs with everything marked and everything. Now, you know, I, there was a time I had organized clutter. <laughs> but it was still, as a matter of fact, I went through boxes and uh, I typed out everything that's in that box. That way, if, you know, it's down, you know, if I need it, I can look and see where it's at. But I mean, I have, listen, I have stuff in there like a VCR fast forwarding machine. <laughs> Why do I still have a VCR fast forwarding machine? I have three DVD players that don't work. <laughs> so you kind of get an idea. And uh, I like watching the hoarders because it makes me feel good. <laughs> well, I ain't near that bad. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have, you know, we don't have paths in the house anyway to get through. But uh, it's it's clutter. Now, <clears throat> I can tell you what I've stored in my sheds. But what have I stored in my heart? You see, that's what's really important. What do we have stored? in our hearts. Jesus said there are a couple things that can be stored in our hearts. He said we can have good treasure in our hearts or we can have evil treasure in our hearts. Now most of us don't have evil treasure, at least not in the truest sense of the word. Because when I think evil, I think of things like murder, rape, incest, child abuse, torturing a puppy, things like that, I think of as evil. And most of us in here, I do not believe, have that kind of evil stored up in our hearts. At least I hope not. If, 
if we do, I will build an altar that you can come and, <laughs> and get right with God. Amen? But, uh, but, you know, God calls unbelief evil. Now, I think maybe some of us might have a little bit of unbelief stored up in our hearts. We may have, you know, some worry stored up in our hearts. And God said that's not good as well. Uh, most of us, however, will find what we find in my shed in our hearts, and that's a lot of clutter. You know, we have a lot of clutter in our heart. And again, the problem with clutter is it makes it hard to find what's important. So when we have a lot of clutter in our hearts, it's hard to find that which is good. It's useful. There's nothing wrong with things like recreation unless they get in the way of things like worship. Amen. There's nothing wrong with television. Well, maybe, maybe not. But until it gets in the way of maybe reading God's Word. You know, we have time to watch three or four or five hours of TV, but we can't spend 15 minutes in the Word of God. See, there's a clutter that gets in the way. And things that are cluttering up our heart keeps us or keep us from the important things. The things of God. The things that really matter. You know, there are also thoughts that are stored in our hearts that are like mold. Creeping in and taking over areas of our hearts. See, that which affect our hearts affect our lives to a large degree. These thoughts that are like mold need to be changed. We need a renovation of our hearts. We need to remove mold-causing thoughts. We need to remove them so that we can establish good treasure. We need to remove things that are rotting and replace them with something that is fresh. You know, there's nothing like a fresh word from God. I don't know, I'm sure you do. When you read the Bible, sometimes you just get a fresh revelation. And man, you can just live off that for hours or days or weeks. I remember whenever Cheryl and I first got married, we lived in Florida. And uh, we would try sometimes, I know this sounds bad, but it really isn't. We said, let's just not talk about church or, or God things tonight. Let's just do something. You would be out with friends or something. But you know how long that lasted? <laughs> It'd be an hour, half an hour, we'd be talking about, oh man, I was just reading the Word the other day and, and this really hit me. You know, because whenever God's that much part of your life, you just it's hard to remove them. Mm -hmm. Not that we wanted to remove them, but we thought we would just have conversations about some other things that night. But when He comes a part of your life, I mean, that's just, that's in your heart. And now the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when your heart's full of God things, that's what you're going to talk about. It's God things. Amen? So, what we want to do though is when we have mold-causing thoughts, we need to remove that clutter. We need to remove that moldy wall from our hearts in order to establish that which is good. The good treasure. We need to get rid of thoughts like jealousy, Worry, self-condemnation, unbelief, greed, unforgiveness. See, these are all like mold in our hearts. Just eat away and take over areas of our lives. We need to tear them down and throw them out. Get rid of them. You know, when you tear them down, you don't leave that old moldy wall laying in your house, do you? You haul it off to the dump. And that's what we need to do with these kind of thoughts that are, you know, we need to just not just like put them out on the back shelf or the back burner, we need to take them out and get rid of them and remove them. <clears throat> so that's good, Pastor. Yeah. That's a good thought. Yeah, thank you, Stan. Um, <clears throat> that's a good thought, but, but how do we do that? How do we remove those thoughts? Well, if you turn or look up at 2 Corinthians 10.5, Thank you. 
2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now here's the part I want you to hear. Bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. In other words, when a thought comes to you, we need to measure that thought by does this line up with the Word of God? <clears throat> does this thought honor Christ? And if the answer is no, <laughs> we need to tear that thought down. We need to bring it into the obedience of Christ. And what that means is get rid of it. Remove it from our heart. That it won't take up space. That it won't cause mold to spread. But we need to get rid of it and replace it with good treasure. We need to replace it with a new thought. And how do we do that? <clears throat> well, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us how we do that. It reads in Romans 12, 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How are we to be transformed? By the renewing of our mind. If you look that word renewing up in the Thyers Greek English lexicon of the New Testament, it, it is actually the word renovation. Renovate. We've renovated our mind. We're transformed by the renovation of our minds. And that word means a complete change for the better. At church, if we could just get this part down, and I only have about two points this morning. One is get rid of the old, the junk, the mold, the clutter. Get rid of it, taking every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, removing it from our heart, and replacing it by renovating with that which is better. Amen? Amen? That which is from God. You know, again, when we renovate our house, our plan is to go out into our shed. <laughs> That's one step. And getting rid of the clutter. That which is actually getting in the way. Again, I don't know how many times I think, no, oh, I need this tool. Oh, I have that tool. Oh, it's in the shed. <laughs> it's like a deep, dark hole you know, <laughs> that you just don't go into. I mean, I have mattresses out there, box springs. You know, just, of course, I'll save those for the kids, but they don't need it now, so, you know, we'll just move it on out. But in like manner, cleaning that shed out or, or whatever room you might have in your house or closet or whatever it may be. In like manner, we need to get rid of the clutter that's taking up room in our hearts and hiding the good treasure. So how do we renew our minds or how do we renovate our minds? How do we store up that which is good? And here's another important thought. By applying God's Word to our lives. I don't care how much you read the Bible. I don't even care how much you study the Bible. What really matters is how much do you apply His Word to your life. And that's really, I said this is a simple message, and that's really the point. We need to apply the Word of God. Apply it to our lives. Hallelujah. So, final thought. How do we know when and where to renovate? Okay, Pastor, you say, you know, yeah, I understand. I, I got some renovation to do, but how do I begin? How do I know what to do or where to do it? Here's the point. Listen to what you say. Listen to what you say because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if evil things are coming out of your mouth or just cluttery things, are coming out of your mouth, then you know that's what's in your heart. So we need to renovate. We need to start renewing right there. The way we look at our heart is to listen to what is coming out of our mouths. And it might surprise you. you. You may be saying things and you're not even paying attention. You don't realize what you're saying. 
but you need to maybe just take some time and say, okay, this week I'm, or today, I'm going to really listen to what I'm saying. Listen to maybe the doubt, the unbelief. Listen to some things that are maybe not quite wholesome as they should be. I mean, are they God-honoring thoughts? You see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We know what's in the heart by what's coming out of our mouths. When Cheryl and I finish our renovations, I'm sure we'll stand back and we'll appreciate those changes. When that time comes, if ever, <laughs> but if that time comes and we actually redo our bathroom, I'm sure we're going to walk in and go, wow, <laughs> isn't this nice? You know, we're doing renovations in the church. And, uh, and man, let me just throw this out there. If you would like to be part of that, let me know. You know, Mike and I love doing it, but we'll allow some other folks to, to come in and help, for sure. But, uh, uh, I mean, we got a lot of stuff that's going on, and I don't know if this is probably not the best time to talk about it, but I'll just throw it out there real quick. Uh, you know, of course, we're fixing that up where that tub was in the back, and putting new walls in there, and that, things of that nature. But, as the Lord supplies, and how many believe He will? Amen. As the Lord supplies, we're going to do a whole facelift in this sanctuary. We're going to build a platform up here. This is not very tall, but a platform. And we want to put new carpet from one end to the other. And on top of that, we're going to move the sound booth, make a real sound booth at the very back corner. And we're going to put all new chairs that are all alike from front to back. Won't that be awesome? Yes. Hallelujah. All it takes is some money and time. And... Uh, so if you you know if you feel so led to give above and beyond your regular giving, uh, that would be awesome. You can donate some time to help us with it. That'd be awesome, amen. And uh, it'll just be so refreshing to walk in. We'll stand back and go, yeah, that looks good. Just like Cheryl and I will stand back and look at our bathroom and go, yeah, that looks good. Look at our floors and when we first moved in, said, you know, we need to replace these. <laughs> Six years later, we're still saying we need to replace these. <laughs> But you know, when we finish renovating our hearts, we'll, well, we'll probably never really finish renovating our hearts, but when we listen to the words that we're saying and see the changes, because we know the words we're saying reflect what's in our hearts, I think it's going to bring some joy. Amen? I remember when this used to be in my heart, but it's not there anymore. How do I know? Because I can tell what's coming out of my mouth. That there's been some changes that have taken place. Not only will you notice it, but people around you will notice it. And they'll say, wow, you've really changed. Well, I can tell you. I mean, I can point out some of you and say, I, I can see the growth in your lives just by the way you talk. You can really place a person pretty quick just by the words that come out of their mouth because they're speaking what's in their heart. It doesn't take long. <coughs> I want to encourage you today. Start renovating your heart. Listen to the words you're saying. Identify what needs to be changed, what wall needs to be taken out. Take it out as you keep inventory with the words of your mouth. Not to bring condemnation. That's not, not it at all. God doesn't want you keeping condemnation on yourself. But just so you can recognize what needs to be removed and what needs to be replaced. And then just take the time to build new walls using God's Word. Amen? And enjoy the process. Enjoy watching yourself grow in Christ. Enjoy watching yourself being strengthened by His Word. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me just, I don't do this too often, but how many, I want to challenge all of you this week to pay particular attention to what's coming out of your mouth. And then I want you to make a commitment to begin taking some of that out. And putting some, how many would, would take that challenge this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. I'm going to pray for you as you take that challenge. That this week, at the end of this week, you'll be able to stand back and smile and say, I can see a change already in one week. 
It doesn't take forever. It just takes a decision. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again this morning because of how awesome you are. Lord, we thank you that you've given us all the tools that we need to make the renovations in our lives. And Lord, I just, it's so exciting to grow and to realize that we've grown and it's exciting to see each other grow and to watch that growth. And Lord, I just pray this week as we, we have all taken this challenge, Lord, to do some renovating, Lord, uh, I pray that as we listen to our words that you will help us and guide us to see those areas uh, that can be changed to bring more glory and honor to you and Lord to, to bring more satisfaction to our own lives. So Father, I just pray for your strength to be upon us. I pray God for your wisdom to abound and Lord, I just pray that you would uh, uh, direct us in the areas that we need to go and we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. And we will see you next Sunday.